With a linear actuator, you can make an automatic door opening and closing system. You can make a solar tracker, an automatic system for your dish antenna, TV stand, etc. There are thousands of projects in which you can use an electric linear actuator. In today's episode, you will learn how to make a long range wireless remote control system for an electric linear actuator using Arduino. NRF24L01 transceiver modules, HC05 Bluetooth module, and an Android application designed in Android Studio. The control commands are sent from the Android app to the Arduino Nano wirelessly using Bluetooth module. Arduino process the command and then send it to the Arduino board on the receiver side using the NRF24L01 RF transceiver module. The Arduino then controls the linear actuator. Our designed Android app can send three commands which are used to control the forward movement of the shaft, reverse movement of the shaft, and to stop the linear actuator. Let's practically see this whole system in action and then I will explain other things in detail. Isn't it amazing? You don't need any extra hardware to keep with you all the time. You can just take out your cell phone and start controlling your linear actuator which is installed within 1 km range if you are using PA plus LNA version of the NRF24L01 modules. Now you have got the idea of what you are going to learn after watching this video. Without any further delay, let's get started. Components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. A linear actuator is an actuator that creates motion in a straight line. We have both AC and DC types of linear actuators. The one you can see right now is the DC type linear actuator. So this is an electric linear actuator which converts DC electric motors rotational motion into linear motion which can be used for lifting, sliding, dropping or tilting of machines or materials. Inside the linear actuator the DC motor is provided with gears to reduce the speed and to increase the torque. It has two wires and when connected with the desired voltage the shaft will start moving. Right now you can see the shaft is moving in the forward direction. Now. If you want to change the direction of movement, all you need is to change the polarity and that's it. Now this is the simplest and manual way of controlling the linear actuator. For changing the polarity, we will make our own edge bridge circuit which I will explain later in this video. The linear actuators are also provided with the limit switches which defines the maximum and minimum endpoints. Some linear actuators are designed in a way that the endpoints can be adjusted as per the requirement. Like the one you can see on the screen, you can unscrew this part and change the position to set the lower and upper or minimum and maximum endpoints. The main advantage of setting the endpoints is that when you power up the linear actuator, you don't need to be worried. The limit switches will automatically turn off the motor when any of the two limit switches is activated. So when the lower limit switch is activated, the motor will stop and will stay in this position until the polarity is changed and then the shaft start moving in the forward or upward direction. The shaft will keep moving until the upper limit switch is activated. This way the movement of the shaft can be precisely controlled between two points. The type of the electric linear actuator I'm using needs 24 volts DC but for the demonstration purposes I'm using 11.1 volt LiPo battery 
and this is because the shaft moves slowly. Now let's take a look at the transmitter and receiver circuit diagrams. On the transmitter side we have a Bluetooth module HC05, Arduino Nano and NRF24L01 transceiver module. The 5 volt and ground pins of the Bluetooth module are connected with the 5 volt and ground pins of the Arduino. The RX and TX pins of the Bluetooth module are connected with the Arduino pins 2 and 3. A decoupling capacitor of 10 microfarad is connected with the VCC and ground pins of the NRF24L01 module. The VCC and ground pins are connected with the Arduino's 3.3V and ground pins. CE is connected with pin 9, CSN is connected with pin 10, SCK is connected with 13, MOSI is connected with pin 11 and the MISO pin is connected with pin 12 of the Arduino. Now let's take a look at the receiver side circuit diagram. The NRF24L01 connection with the Arduino remains exactly the same. The circuit on the left side is basically an edge bridge circuit which is used to control the forward and reverse movement of the linear actuator. This edge bridge circuit changes the polarity of the voltage supplied to the motor. The two relays are controlled using the Arduino pins 2 and 3. If you want to know in detail about the working of the edge bridge circuit, then read my article available on electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. These are the development boards I designed for testing my NRF24L01 based projects. These are the same development boards I have been using in my previous projects. I will provide links to all the related tutorials in which the same development boards are used. This is the edge bridge module designed as per the circuit diagram. You can download the PCB Gerber files from my website. I connected everything as per the circuit diagram and now let's take a look at the transmitter and receiver programming. The transmitter and receiver side programming I have already explained in my previous tutorial based on wireless sensor network, which I highly recommend you should watch because I have explained the most basic things including how to create different nodes. For this project, I made a few changes. I added the software serial.h header file which I used for creating another serial port on pins 3 and 2 of the Arduino Nano. Inside the setup function, I activated the Bluetooth module. Inside the loop function, I added code for the Bluetooth module. If no data is received from the Bluetooth module, then simply run this block of code. And if data is received from the Bluetooth module, then store the received value in variable B data. And finally, this value is stored in the array data at location 0 and is sent to the node 00. On the receiver side, I defined two pins for the edge bridge module. Next, I defined two flakes to stop the unnecessary repetition of code. Rest of the code remains exactly the same except these F conditions. If a value of 23 is received from the transmitter, then stop the linear actuator. If a value of 34 is received, then move the linear actuator in forward direction. And if a value of 66 is received from the transmitter, then move the linear actuator in the reverse direction. So that's all about the programming. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you like today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode. And thanks for watching.